welcome to Elements of Ayurveda, Empowering Wisdom of Life. I'm your host, Colette, and in this podcast, I hope to empower you to take charge of your own health by sharing the holistic teachings of Ayurveda, the ancient healing tradition from India. We will also discuss topics like health and wellness, nutrition, yoga, fitness, meditation, breath work, and much more, as well as interviewing lots of inspiring people along the way. My humble wish is to help you to connect to your true nature, to Mother Nature, and to each other. If you like the content, be sure to subscribe to the show, and the new episodes will automatically download for you to enjoy. If you're new to Ayurveda, I recommend you listen to the first couple of episodes where I do an introduction to Ayurveda and the mind-body types. I've also set up a Facebook group for us to connect and to support each other. And I'd love for you to join me over at Elements of Ayurveda podcast group. And now here's the show. Hey, before we start the show, did you know that I'm hosting an Ayurveda and yoga retreat right here on the French Riviera this October, the 11th to the 13th, a three-day weekend of connection, education, and relaxation. We're going to enjoy lots of talks on Ayurveda, yoga classes, and Ayurvedic workshops, and we're going to hang out in this lovely medieval village, which is just outside Nice, and Nice has the international airport, so it's really easy to access. If you're interested, please check out my website, elementshealingandwellbeing.com forward slash retreat. So check it out. I would love to have you here and connect with you in person. It will be fantastic. So I hope you can join us. Okay, now let's get on with the show. Hey there, it's Colette. And today I want to talk to you about some more healing herbs. I did a episode a few weeks ago now on cilantro and parsley and basil. And today I want to cover three more. That last episode was really popular. And I want to go through these herbs because they're really amazing medicine given to us by Mother Nature, this natural medicine to help us maintain balance physically and mentally and to prevent illness in our body. And with Ayurveda educating us about our mind-body type, and when we understand our unique physical and mental constitution, and we have such awareness around the doshas, and we can really sense when they're aggravated or out of balance, that's when we want to use nature's medicine, be it herbs or food or adjusting any aggravating factors in our lifestyle. And by catching those subtle signals of when our body or doshas are aggravated, then we can bring our body and mind back into balance before any more serious problems manifest in the body or mind. And so this is why I want to tell you about these amazing herbs today, as we can use these herbs as medicine. So today I'm going to delve into mint, rosemary, and neem. So mint is something we're all familiar with, and this is particularly good for those of us in the Northern Hemisphere right now, because that summer heat and mint is the perfect balance. Mint is abundant in summertime and nature is giving us this beautiful mint herb to keep us in balance. And then secondly, I'll be discussing rosemary. So I want to think of those of you in the Southern Hemisphere, maybe have cooler temps right now. Rosemary is a great one because it's more warming uh, for the body, more pungent. And then finally, I want to introduce you to neem, which is a herb that's used, is actually from the neem tree. And it's used a lot in Ayurveda. And I want to explain why it's used in Ayurveda. So let's start first of all with mint. Now, fresh mint is available all year round. And like I said a moment ago, it's really abundant in the summer months. And if you've had a mint plant growing in a garden or in a pot, you know that it really grows rapidly. Mint is known to have originated in Asia and the Mediterranean region. And it is known for its many benefits throughout history. It has been found in Egyptian tombs going as far back as 1000 BC. Greeks added it to their baths to invigorate their bodies. And Romans used it in cooking and to aid with digestion and also for oral health. Now, in many cultures, mint symbolized hospitality and was offered as a sign of welcome and friendship to guests. How nice to have this beautiful, 
refreshing odor of mint as you come into someone's home. There are over 30 varieties of mint, and the most common being spearmint, which is like the garden mint, or peppermint. Now, peppermint is more stimulating, whereas spearmint is more relaxing. It's not as intense. So let's talk about the energetics of the herb mint, according to Ayurveda. Well, the rasa, or taste, is sweet. The virya, or the energy, is cooling. So it has a cooling effect on the body. And the vipak, or the post-digestive effect, is pungent. Now, while other pungent spices like cinnamon and clove can increase the heat in the body, mint actually disperses the heat in the body, and therefore it gives this cooling after effect. Now, mint is high in the ether or space element, and this adds that feeling of expansiveness and clarity, making it great for calming the mind and the emotions. Mint also has a soothing action on the nerves, helping the body to relax and clear the mind and the senses. It is great for pacifying pitta and kapha, but it can aggravate vata in excess due to that space or either element. So peppermint can really sometimes overstimulate vata, so you have to be aware of that. Now, mint has one of the highest antioxidant capacities of any food, meaning that it protects your cells against the effects of free radicals. Mint also has antibacterial properties and also contains vitamin A, C, and B2, and other minerals like magnesium, copper, calcium, and zinc, all of which improves the body's strength and vitality. So now I want to go into talking about the benefits of mint. Well, the one of the biggest benefits is that it soothes the digestion. It is antispasmodic, meaning that it relieves muscle spasms, also prevents and relieves gas, and it's soothing and cleansing to the digestive tract. It is often used for gastrointestinal disorders. Mint is a cooling diaphoretic in that it releases heat via sweat, and it's also a great decongestant, known for breaking up phlegm and mucus and really opening up the sinuses. Therefore, it's used for common colds and flus and relieving any respiratory complaints, like in the case of seasonal allergies or cough or sore throat or colic. It eases inflammation in the body and relieves headaches and arthritis. Mint has antiseptic and antibacterial properties, making it effective in oral care, and it aids in oral infections like mouth ulcers and swollen gums, which is why mint is used in toothpaste. Now, mint is also used in pain relief ointments, as it is cooling and has a calming effect and can ease the discomfort and itching from rashes and insect bites or other reactions. It also helps to relieve nausea and particularly good for morning sickness and also relieves stress. Drinking mint tea or breathing in mint vapors can calm the body and the mind. Skin health, it's really good for it due to its anti-inflammatory properties. Mint is often used in skincare products to treat acne. Now, mint is definitely a herb to have around in summer, especially for those warm-blooded pitta types, as this herb will really cool you down both physically and mentally. It's a great digestive aid for all doshas. However, as I mentioned earlier, for vata, it has to be careful because it can be a little bit too stimulating. So I wouldn't recommend having it uh, mint tea or anything like that for vata late in the day. But mint tea is a great way to get the benefits of this amazing herb. And obviously, fresh mint is best if it's available. And in Ayurveda, mint is often used in chutneys and lassies as well. But you could add mint to rice dishes, to soups, to salads. It's a great way to benefit from the cooling and calming effect of this fantastic herb. Or as I've been doing lately, we've been having a heat wave here in France and I've been adding mint to my water. I've been having lots of mint tea. I've been diffusing mint, peppermint oil in my diffuser as I work. 
And with this heat, the best food, the best snack to have is watermelon with some fresh mint on top. And you've, you've probably seen the photos of my watermelon and mint on Instagram and the Facebook page because that's something I have been having a lot of in this heat wave, but it's really keeping my pitta in check, which is fantastic. So like I said, you can diffuse mint essential oils in your home. And this is a great way to really get that calming effect of mint. And it also has a kind of clearing effect on the mind. So it's really wonderful to use as you're working. Now to store mint, I find that mint can be a little bit more delicate than the other herbs of parsley or cilantro. It's best to store in a damp towel, but don't tighten it up too much. Just keep it really loose. And that's the best way to store it. Uh, for contraindications, really with peppermint oil, it's best to avoid it if you have serious gastroesophageal reflux disease or hiatal hernia or any problems with heartburn or anything like that, it may exacerbate the symptoms. So I would always, with any natural medicine, I know I've mentioned this before, always get advice, particularly if you're on other medications, because even though these herbs are natural, you know, they can interfere sometimes with if you're taking other medications. So always best to get advice. Okay, so that is mint. And as I said, it's great for those in the Northern Hemisphere right now as we're in summer. And so for those of you in the Southern Hemisphere, I want to talk about a herb that would be really good for you right now, which is rosemary. And I love the smell of rosemary. There's nothing like walking past a rosemary bush and you get that smell. It's just so divine. But rosemary is a shrub and it's an evergreen shrub and it's actually part of the mint family. And it's also related to basil and marjoram and oregano. It's usually found growing by the ocean and actually its Latin name translates to dew of the sea. I thought that was lovely. Now, rosemary has been regarded since ancient times for its strengthening qualities and really for boosting memory. It dates back to 500 BC when it was used as a culinary and medicinal herb by the ancient Greeks and Romans. So according to Ayurveda, let's talk about the energetics of rosemary. Well, the rasa or taste is pungent and bitter. The virya or energy is warming, so it has a warming effect on the body. And the vipak or the post-digestive effect is pungent. So the effect on the doshas is that it's balancing for kapha and vata. However, it can increase the pitta dosha due to this pungent warming effect. Now, rosemary is rich in calcium and iron and vitamin B6 and vitamin E, and it's really rich in antioxidants and has anti-inflammatory compounds to boost the immune system and really improves the blood circulation. So let's talk now about the benefits of rosemary. Well, rosemary has been shown in scientific studies to really improve the memory, reducing cognitive and preventing cognitive dysfunction and brain aging. So it's been considered an antidote to mental fatigue and forgetfulness. Now, studies have revealed that a carnosic acid found in rosemary can significantly promote eye health. Rosemary is also known to improve digestion and particularly good to aid in digestion of starchy foods and meats. And you often see rosemary paired with like meat roasts, and this will really aid in the digestion of that meat. Now, rosemary's pungent qualities induce perspiration, and therefore it's a useful tonic if you're suffering from colds or flus. Now, due to its anti-inflammatory properties, rosemary can be used topically to alleviate muscle pain, and it can really ease arthritis pain as well. It actually numbs the nerves, so really alleviates that pain. Rosemary is also known as a heart stimulant, boosting the circulatory system in the body and also helping the lymph move, which aids in cellular respiration and detoxification. 
It is warming, and the blood lymph boosting effects are therefore good for kapha imbalances. So it really helps in aiding any of that kapha sluggishness or any of that stagnation in kapha. So really good one to remember if you have a high kapha constitution or a kapha imbalance. Rosemary is a good one to get the blood, and in particular the lymph moving, to prevent any stagnation in the body. Rosemary oil has been shown to have a stimulatory effect on the brain, making you feel more alert and energized and improving concentration. It's also known for boosting positivity. It's a great tonic for the hair, helping to rejuvenate the scalp and really promoting hair growth. And you'll often see rosemary in lots of shampoos. And rosemary is also used in skin products because it really helps to tone the skin and retain moisture. With its vis- Vitamin E and the blood stimulating qualities, it prevents age related skin damage and can aid with the treatment of scars. Uh, the antibacterial and antiseptic properties in rosemary prove beneficial for acne and eczema and psoriasis and dermatitis and oily skin. Now, people with a high pitta constitution or pitta imbalance have to be careful with rosemary as it can increase the heat in the body. And due to its blood-boosting properties, it may stimulate menstruation and affect the uterus. Therefore, if you're pregnant, maybe limit the amount of rosemary or also limit it if you have any bleeding disorder because it is known for this blood-boosting properties. So how to use rosemary? Well, you can use it in your food. Like I mentioned before, it's often cooked with roast, like lamb. Uh, You can use it in soups or stews. It's a more autumn winter herb because it has that warming effect on the body, promotes blood circulation to the extremities, keeping you warm. Uh, As a tea, crushing rosemary leaves and pouring boiling water over them can be great and just allowing the the leaves to infuse into the water before straining and drinking or just rubbing rosemary leaves in between your hands and inhaling the oils to bring clarity to the mind and to boost concentration. Of course, you could diffuse rosemary essential oil in your home or in your office if you're studying or at work. It can be a great one to really bring that clarity and help you focus and also prevent lethargy. And as I said earlier, you'll find it in shampoos and facial products and lotions, but you could also make your own rosemary infused oil. You basically take the herb and putting it in some oil, uh, oil of your choice, and allowing that rosemary essential oils to infuse into that oil. Or you could add some rosemary oil to your bath water as well. But remember, it can be stimulating. So you maybe not for an evening bath. Maybe if you're having a morning bath, you could add some rosemary there. So that is rosemary. And for those of you right now in the Southern Hemisphere, if you're having cooler temps, maybe this would be perfect to add into your foods. You could add it to roasted vegetables as well. Lots of ways you can add it in. So if you do try out these herbs, I would love to hear your thoughts over on the Elements of Ayurveda podcast Facebook group. Let me know if you use these herbs, how you feel they affect your body, and what's your favorite way of using them. So please let me know. Okay, so finally, I want to introduce you to neem. Now, neem... The herb comes from the neem tree and it has so many medical benefits that it's actually called the village pharmacy in India. And it's root bark, it's stem bark, the gum from the tree, the flowers, the leaves, the seed, the seed oil are all used for their benefits. So Ayurveda has understood the beneficial properties of neem for thousands of years, and it it typically grows in tropical and semi-tropical regions of India and Sri Lanka and the Maldives. Now, neem is a strong antioxidant and an anti-inflammatory agent. It's also antiviral, antibacterial, antimicrobial, antifungal, a natural antiseptic, and a natural wound healer. So many properties in neem. So let's talk about the energetics of neem. Well, the rasa or taste is bitter and astringent. 
The virya or the energy is cooling, has a cooling effect on the body. The vipak or post-digestive effect is pungent. And the effect on the doshas is that it's balancing for pitta and kapha, but can increase vata due to its cold, light, and dry qualities. So that's in the case of like increases like. So vata is already cold, light, and dry. And because neem has these same qualities, it can increase those qualities for vata and therefore could aggravate vata. But it is great for decreasing the aggravated heat in the body. So it's particularly good for balancing pitta. And even though it has this cooling action on the body, it helps to balance kapha because the post-digestive effect is pungent. So let's talk about the benefits of neem. Well, this bitter digestive has a cooling effect on the body and therefore is great for treating any hot conditions like fever. It's also great for treating parasites along with shingles and the associated nerve pain that goes with shingles. Neem is known for its blood purifying properties and it's used to treat skin infections such as itching, dermatitis, eczema, psoriasis, scabies, chronic wounds and burns. The neem leaves can be put in bath water and this helps to reduce skin infections and really clears the channels of the body and purifies the blood and can help with all pitta disorders. The decoction of neem can be used to cleanse wounds. The smoke of burning neem leaves cleanses wounds and the environment. Now, I was told by one of my teachers that in India, if someone has chicken pox or measles, that they will lay in a bed of neem leaves to alleviate the symptoms that come with those conditions. Now, neem is also a natural detoxifier, flushing toxins and ama from the body, cleansing the liver and boosting the immune system. It's really beneficial for fevers, as I mentioned earlier, but also in case of like malaria or a really chronic pitta or kapha fevers. It helps to reduce and maintain blood glucose levels and helps in diabetes. And of course, if you have diabetes and you're on other medication, you definitely have to consult with your practitioner before taking anything like neem. Now, neem prevents water retention in the body due to its astringent quality. And this quality also helps to dry up and clean moisture in wounds or in any ulcers in the body. It's particularly good for like mouth ulcers. It helps to clean and dry out those mouth ulcers, which are a sign of an aggravated pitta. So it's very effective also with respiratory problems and when there is an infection or sinusitis. And neem tea is great if you have like a flu or a cold. It's also beneficial in treating rheumatism and arthritis. And it's also a great natural bug repellent. It was definitely one I relied on when I lived in Bali because it's a great natural product and it really helps keep the bugs away. Neem is also used in toothpaste, and the teachings of Ayurveda tell us that toothpaste should be astringent and bitter. Now, if the toothpaste we use is sweet, well, then the saliva will become thick, and it will be rich in calcium, and this will lead to the development of tartar on the teeth. So, in Ayurveda, it's recommended that we use toothpaste that is astringent and bitter. And neem toothpaste, which is bitter and astringent, makes the saliva thin and the tartar will disappear with no receding gums. So this is something that you can look out for. I've seen neem toothpaste a lot on the market, something you can definitely order online too. In fact, in Ayurveda, it's recommended to chew on a neem twig to help to clean the teeth and clean the gums. And this is something you often see recommended in the texts of Ayurveda. Now, neem is also used in anti-dandruff shampoos, and it really helps in releasing excess heat from the scalp. Neem soap is also great for sensitive pitta skin. 
So there you go. They're the benefits of Neem. Now let's talk about how you could use Neem. Well, like I said, you can find Neem toothpaste and mouth rinses and shampoos and skin creams and ointments. And this is really great. But if you wanted to make something yourself, you could grind like fresh neem leaves, if you can get a hold of them, and make a paste. And then you can apply this to any skin condition. If you have any, uh, like a pitta skin disorder, it's great for that. Of course, when using any products, you know, it's always advisable to do a patch test first. But neem is something that is definitely beneficial for any pitta disorders because it really has a cooling uh, effect on the blood. So neem tea, as I mentioned earlier, is another way you could take neem. And neem powder you could also purchase, and that can be mixed into a paste with water or honey, and that could be applied to any skin or wound. That's another great way to use it topically. Neem can be used as an oral medication. You'll often see a lot of um, neem oils or for mouth ulcers or canker sores or anything like that. They're really great or you need blisters in the mouth. Neem oil is made from cooking neem leaves, usually in a base of sesame oil. A neem ac- extract in Ayurveda, they say that might be too strong. So the neem oil where the leaves are cooked in the sesame oil, that can be great and that can be used as a massage oil. And this is really great because, of course, whatever you, apl- you apply to the skin reduces pitta throughout the body. So for contraindications with neem, as it can lower the blood sugar levels, it's best to avoid this if you're doing any fasting. And people with diabetes should take neem only under guidance from their practitioner. And also if you're pregnant or breastfeeding, you always want to make sure you check before you're using any products, any natural products or any um, supplements. So there you go. That's three more herbs covered today, and I hope you enjoy that info on mint and rosemary and neem. And please let me know, like I said, over on the Elements of Ayurveda podcast Facebook group, if you use these herbs, how you use them, how they affect your constitution. And uh, yeah, give us some tips. I always love to hear from you. So please Click on the link in the show notes or head on over there and let us know. Also, I want to remind you of my upcoming retreat here in the south of France, just outside of Nice, where I'm going to host a three-day weekend retreat on Ayurveda and yoga. And this is happening October 11th to the 13th. Each day, we're going to have an Ayurvedic chat. I'm going to talk about food as medicine and lifestyle medicine and mindfulness medicine. We'll have workshops. We'll have yoga classes. We'll enjoy the foods of the area and we'll have some fun together as well. So please check out the link in the show notes or visit my website, elementshealingandwellbeing.com forward slash retreat. It will be really lovely to connect with you in person. So check that out. Also, if you think that this episode will be helpful for any of your friends or family members, please share it with them so we can spread the word about Ayurveda and help people take charge of their own health and well-being. Thank you for tuning in. Take good care of yourself. Be well and ciao for now.